the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point Northern Aquaculture Demonstration Facility introduces the Walleye Video Manual, a series of instructional videos on intensive culture. Video 9, Recirculating Aquaculture Systems Standard Operating Procedures. A number of practices are performed daily for raising fish in RAS at the UWSP NADF. These include, but are not limited to, water quality monitoring and managing, cleaning, feeding, fish sampling, and density monitoring. In this video, we will highlight the standard operating procedures using the facility's warm water recirculation system as an example for each one of these practices. To begin each day, each rearing tank is checked and recorded for temperature, oxygen, and pH, as well as fish behavior. In this system, the facility has the capability to continuously monitor temperature and dissolved oxygen levels of each tank in the system utilizing a YSI 5500D optical monitoring and control instrument. This enables quick monitoring and alarm capability. Total dissolved gases are also checked weekly to ensure total dissolved gas pressure is less than 102 parts per million. Levels above this can lead to gas supersaturation causing serious and fatal issues such as exopathalmia or Popeye disease shown here. A handheld flow meter is also used to check water velocities in various areas around the tank. Tank velocity can be managed with the amount of water inflow and orientation of the inflow pipe. For walleye, a velocity of less than one body length per second is recommended throughout the rearing period in RAS. Walleye should be well distributed throughout the tank and appear to be swimming against the current with ease. Although tank velocity can be adjusted to suit walleye, the tank's R value should remain at 2 or greater. This R value refers to how many times the tank's volume is exchanged per hour. Further water quality parameters are checked and recorded weekly or depending on system maturity and bioplan. This includes, but is not limited to, salinity, carbon dioxide, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, hardness, alkalinity, and total suspended solids. UWSP NADF utilizes a spectrophotometer for precise and accurate readings. A Hawk 3900 model is shown here. Generally, if any changes were made to the system that would affect any one parameter, full water quality analysis are checked more frequently. Also, if any issues are occurring such as mortality, fish behavior, or system equipment malfunctions, water quality is also verified. It is crucial to record, recognize changes, and understand patterns happening in RAS regarding water quality. Check the manual for more on water quality and its interactions. Following daily water quality management, mortalities are netted out, collected, and recorded from each tank. Any unusual qualities regarding the mortalities are noted, such as cannibalism, popping eyes, flared gills, redness, fungus, or coloration loss on the caudal peduncle, also known as whitetail. These may be signs of disease, infection, or water quality issues that need to be addressed. Mortalities from the system are properly disposed of immediately after collected and recorded. Any equipment used for mortality collection is disinfected after use. Next, the tanks are cleaned by scrubbing the tank walls, side screen, and lightly plunging the bottom drain. Monitoring probes and in-tank lights should also be gently cleaned with a scrub brush. Waste and debris building up in the radial flow settler and bottom drain are flushed from the system by opening the bottom drain valve and sending the waste to the settling and clarifier ponds. The drum filter is also cleaned on occasion using a power washer. Time between cleanings will depend on fish densities and feed rates. UWSP NADF generally does this about once per week. After monitoring and cleaning, daily feed ration for each tank is measured out and placed on 24-hour belt feeders. This ration is calculated based on fish numbers, fish size, and growth rates. This information is gathered from regular sampling, discussed later on in this video. UWSP NADF utilizes a high-protein feed, such as Scredding brand, for the walleyes raised in an RAS. Feed brand and type is important not only for the fish species, but also for the system type. 
Certain feeds can cause debris and film to build up on the drum filter or clog tank bottom screens. A portion of feed is kept in sealed, dry containers for everyday use inside the aqua barn. The majority of feed is stored in a walk-in cooler to preserve freshness. Feed that is not kept cool and dry can quickly become rancid and if gone unnoticed can be detrimental to the fish population. As a rule of thumb, generally fish feeds have a maximum shelf life of six months, regardless of the storage environment. After this time, crucial nutrients such as vitamin C can leach out of the feed. With the addition of feed, a buffer is also added, such as sodium bicarbonate, to the system sump, which increases alkalinity or the buffering capacity against declining pH values. Since nitrification is an acid forming process occurring in the biofilter, without sufficient alkalinity levels to buffer the system, pH can rapidly decline, becoming acidic. Acidity decreases the biofilter performance and thus leading to spikes in ammonia nitrogen. The amount of buffer added is based on how much feed is supplied to the system. Generally, a quarter pound of sodium bicarbonate per one pound of fish feed that is distributed to the system in a 24-hour period. This assists to maintain levels greater than 150 parts per million calcium carbonate, referred to as alkalinity. Daily buffer additions may need to be adjusted depending on water quality factors of individual systems. In addition to daily operating procedures, fish need to be sampled from the system on a scheduled basis to determine growth rates, match feed rates, and track densities. At the facility, small fingerlings are sampled every week due to their fast growth, but as they become larger, sampling is transitioned to once per month. Fish are also sampled each time a population is moved or transferred. Refer to the manual on average growth rates and feed ratios observed at UWSP NADF. Sampling fish from the RAS follows a similar protocol as the larval stages, shown in the previous video 8. A group of fish are sampled for length and weight from each tank in the RAS. The fish are netted out, placed in a trough or bucket of their rearing water, and sedated lightly with MS-222. As shown in the previous video, this sedative enables more accurate sample readings as well as lowers fish stress during handling. A few fish are always tested first to ensure a light sedation before adding the rest of the sample fish into the sedative. Refer to the company's instructions and information on MS-222 before using this product. If fish are being raised for food, it is important to note that MS-222 or Tricane S has a 21-day withdrawal period before the fish can safely be harvested and consumed. Measuring equipment should be wetted down before handling the fish to help protect scales and slime coat. Fish lengths, weights, and any other observations are recorded. This may include deformities, fin erosion, gill quality, and overall visual fitness. The sampled fish are then placed in a trough of fresh system water to recover. The water in both the sedation and recovery bins is refreshed throughout the sampling period to ensure oxygen and temperature remains at safe levels. This process is repeated to sample a group of fish from each individual rearing tank or based on individual facility protocols. UWSP NADF keeps a journal for each system, which includes daily tank and overall system information. This information is entered into a spreadsheet on a regular basis to track bio plans, feed rates, and system patterns. Fish sampling information is also uploaded to calculate average growth rates and update feed ratios. Average fish weights also verify the density of each tank. Density calculations are analyzed and maintained according to individual bioplans, applications, and rearing protocols. The facility suggests raising walleye or sagai at around 60 kg per cubic meter. For accessibility, the facility also posts labels on individual tanks with information regarding approximate fish numbers, feed ratios, total body weights, tank density, and the posted date. This label is updated weekly or after each time the fish are sampled. Duct tape and permanent marker is an easy label for quick updating. If fish are over 4 inches and show a size variance of a quarter inch or greater, they can be graded. 
Grading decreases cannibalism as well as provides more accuracy in determining growth rates and feed ratios within a tank's population. As fish get to a larger size or over 8 inches, grading is not as important, although if necessary the fish can be hand graded or with the clamshell grader. The facility utilizes minnow saver fish graders from Aquatic Solutions, which have interchangeable baskets for various sizes of fish throughout the fingerling rearing period. There are multiple methods for grading fish. In this video, the fish are being netted out of the rearing tank and poured through the grader. The grader size was predetermined based on a recent fish sample to separate the fish into two groups. The larger fish that are unable to swim through the grader are netted out, weighed in water, and transferred to a new tank. The smaller fish swim through the grader and remain in the same tank. The fish are netted multiple times to ensure most of the larger fish are removed. The two new groups of fish are then resampled for lengths and weights to determine new fish numbers and sizes for each tank. Grading is a stressful event for walleye, so it is important to grade quickly and efficiently. After grading, iodine-free sodium chloride can be added to the tanks at 1 to 2 part per thousand and feed should be limited for 24 hours to ease stress. In addition to daily system protocols, keeping a clean and organized facility is key to maintain biosecurity and limit transfer of pathogens. All equipment used for monitoring, cleaning, sampling, or other activities that comes in contact with fish or rearing environment is disinfected with an approved aquaculture disinfectant between uses, such as Vircon. This equipment may include brushes, buckets, nets, measuring boards and scales, boots, waders, gloves, and slickers. Even floors where fish were sampled or hauled is also disinfected after the activity. It is also beneficial to have separate equipment designated for each system to also limit the transfer of pathogens between fish or systems. The facility has various hand washing stations and foot baths located at all exits, entrances of the facility, or at entrances of separate rearing rooms. These practices and more are part of a biosecurity plan that should be clearly outlined and implemented daily by all staff and visitors. Lastly, for any rearing system, including RAS, it is crucial to have both backup capabilities and alarm system for emergencies. The facility operates a SCADA system, or Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, that monitors information regarding the RAS, including water flow rates, system pumps, and water levels. These values are consistently monitored and are linked to the SCADA for 24-hour alarm callout system. This concludes the video on RAS standard operating procedures. Continue to the next video on Purging Techniques and Critical Point Summary.